Feelings. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. Um, I had a wonderful birthday. Thank you to everybody for the just touching, very touching. Um, I am blessed beyond measure with family and friends. If you're a friend, you're family. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, I had a great birthday. I met my sister at Red Robin. Carol Beth was with us. And that's kind of what we did for her birthday. Um, we just went to Red Robin because if it's your birthday, you get a free burger. So she paid for her and Carol Beth. And then I used my burger coupon and I paid for mine. So I, the only thing I really had to pay for was the tip and the drink. So, yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was nice to get out. It was nice to do something. I'm going to be carving a cantaloupe right now. So, I was hoping to get the bowl. I'm so far away. There we go. Um, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to move it back then. All I'm going to be doing is cutting this cantaloupe and running a pie hole, y'all. Um, what was I saying? A birthday. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And to, hold on. I don't want it to roll off. To Sandy Ingle. Thank you to everybody for the wonderful birthday wishes. I love them. That It just got to my heart. How many people acknowledge and, and recognize and, and like me, evidently, so thank you. Um, seeing the Ingle, girl, you done done it again. She has been just amazing. Even with everything she is going through with her own health, she'll message me wanting to know how I'm doing. And I'm like, I'm hanging in there. It's been one of those days, but I'm hanging in there. She sent me, she usually sends us flowers or gift baskets or something. But look at those flowers, how pretty. And then two boxes of chocolate. Yes, I opened one, and it was salted caramel, and it was amazing. So, but th Sandy, thank you so much. They are going to brighten up my kitchen just something special. Every time I look at them, I think of you and I start smiling. Uh-oh. Where are y'all? Okay. Alright, now I gotta get back to cutting my cantaloupe and running my pie hole. Um, but yeah, today has been kind of a low-key day. Um, I had to go at, I had a six o'clock this morning appointment. You heard me. 6 a.m. for an MRI on my shoulder. And so we did that. Bo took me. My Jeep is messing up. It needs a rear axle seal something. I have no clue. But our car guy can't look at it until um, do that stuck on there. Can't get in until Monday. So, um, I drove it yesterday for lunch and it get what I'm looking for. It gave me so much trouble. Me and Kirbeth were scared to death coming home. Um, hold on. Now there we go. Uh, I just want to have the garbage can here to kind of scrape off into. Oh, I did get one basket. I took my little collapsible freezer baskets and I took it and I got out like some lunch type stuff. My pot pies, some chicken nuggets. Her Beth calls them chicken nuggets. She got that from the three southern cats. Honey, she loves three southern cats. If you've never seen them, go to TikTok. And they are absolutely precious. Uh, and a hoot. A hoot and a half to watch. 
Oh, my dryer's gone. Oh, that's what I was going to get to. You know how things come in threes? Of course. Well, my jeans messed, you know, messed up. Today, I went to go wash my clothes. Got them washed. Got them, you know, they were getting to the last rent cycle. Well, put the water in. And then it just kind of quit. And I thought, okay, it quits between cycles. You know, it'll kind of stop and then move on to the next cycle. This never moved on. And so I went in there and I kind of turned the knob and I tried another setting or another rinse. Nothing. Just... We've got a messed up timer on our washer. So that's number two. And then I don't know if you would count this as number three or not. I usually go over our bank statement, you know, every day. But because the birthday yesterday, I just never got to it. I just never did. And this morning I'm getting on it and I'm looking. I'm gonna leave that right there. Excuse me, y'all. I just noticed it was the cantaloupe was sitting there and it needed to be used. So that's what we're doing. Anywho, what was I talking about? I was talking about something, but I don't remember what it was I was talking about. I mean, I made a blank. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Number three. Um. You know, my washer went out, my jeeps and that stuff, and I was checking our bank balance today. That's where I left off. I was checking our bank, whoa, our bank balance today, and it said we went to Dairy Queen. I have not been to a Dairy Queen. Would love to go, but I have not been. But uh, said we went to the Dairy Queen and spent $47. I don't know who you are, unless you're like got a slew of kids. Um, there ain't no way you can spend forty-seven dollars at the Dairy Queen. I'm just saying. And we ain't been up in no Dairy Queen. I call that man. I'm like, did you, you know, buy the guys lunch or something? I mean, I wasn't gonna be mad if he said yes, but it's like alert me and let me know, you know, so I'll know how much money. Make sure we got enough to cover the bills. And uh, I called and asked him. He's like, No, I did not go to the Dairy Queen. He said, Who could spend $47 on lunch anyway? And I'm like, That's what I wondered. So I told him, I said, You're going to have to call the bank. The, our checking account is in his name because that's his direct deposit thing. So, I'm on the savings. But I can, through my phone, I can, like, pay the mortgage, pay his truck payment. It's just, if I have to call them for a reason or go in for a reason, like this, um, it has to be him. We've got to figure out how to make me an authorized user. But because it's you know, him on the mortgage. I don't know. It would, somehow or another, I couldn't be added to the check. Alright, got this one peeled and I'm picking it. Give it up. I'm hoping this bowl will hold it all. But yeah, y'all are going to just hang with me while I chit chat and cut cantaloupe. How about that? Um. Oh, what else was I going to mention? Let's see. Oh, let me know down below in the comments. I loved everybody's comments on the grits. Um, we are a grit family. They can be butter. They can be original. They can be cheese. We do not like the red-eye gravy ones or whatever they're called. The ones with the red things in them. No. No. 
thank you, but no. Uh, and we do add a little bit of sugar to ours. And salt. You gotta have a little bit of salt in your grits. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, my grandmother always did it with sugar in it. That's what I grew up knowing. And Bo's mom did it with grits in it. So, that's just what we, with grits in it. Lord have mercy. With sugar in it. And so, that's just what we grew up knowing. So, that's why we like sugar in our grits. And our kids being, you know, taught the same way. Uh, if you're a salt person or a sugar person or a no person, you probably have learned that from your childhood of your mom or your grandma or whoever was in charge of you. Um, you probably learned that. And so you probably make it that same way for your kids. So think about it, however you're doing it. Your kids are probably going to wind up being grown and doing it the same way you did. Um, and there's nothing wrong. I love that. I love the traditions and the ancestors and remembering how they did what they did. Um, I've learned so much from my grandma Olaf that it ain't even funny. Um, I want to try her biscuit recipe one day. That is just something I never mastered. Now you give me a can of walk biscuit and I'm yours all day long. Give me some of them great value frozen biscuits. I'm in. I know how to melt the butter, put it in the uh, the oh crap, the cast iron. Cast iron. That's the word I was looking for. Y'all, today I have been janky at best. Oh yeah, I had that early morning appointment, and needless to say, when we got back home and he left for work, he didn't stay long. He, Came in, got him something to drink, and then left. Um, but, honey, I laid in that recliner, and I sure enough went back to sleep. I ain't even gonna lie about it. Kind of proud of it. Got in that chair, and I slept. I found I can sleep better in the recliner, like for real. Don't know why. I don't know if sitting up helps me breathe better at night. I've got a Trilogy machine, which is like a, it's not a CPAP. It's a non-invasive ventilator. It's like what they put you on before you get put on a ventilator. Um, and my oxygen is connected to it. So that helps that way, but it breathes in and out. It pumps oxygen in and sucks it back out where a CPAP only pumps it in and only when you go low I think is how that works all right I got a real soft spot right here so we're just gonna cut that out see <laughs> if you ever have a soft spot in your cantaloupe all I gotta do is just cut around it and seriously, the rest of it is fine. I don't think the other one is ready. Oh, it landed in the bowl at least, right? Shoot, and that same piece wound up in the garbage. What the hoosies? I ain't gonna brag no more. But anyhow, I came home and had my nap. And I've woke up, and I have been so busy ever since. I mean, like, for real. I couldn't tell if I was swaying or the room was swaying or what happened. But when the florist came and brought my flowers and my candy, she saw me trying to struggle because I had my catheter bag in my hand. I didn't, you know, I hadn't put my... Uh, cover on. It was one of the things in the wash. And yes, I'm pulling things out like four pieces at a time, wringing them out by hand, 
putting them in the jar, and I'm just going to kind of go that way. Because it was on its last rinse. So, that means we'll just have to shop back the water out. Mm-hmm. In fact, the rest of it. It's kind of sort of on the not quite ready side. But it had that bad bite. And I've had so many cantaloupes that I have let kind of go because it didn't feel firm. It felt too firm. It didn't feel ready. Goodness. It's not there and it's just kind of pulling more off. Scissors. Good gravy. But anyhow, what was that? I hopped around like three different subjects in one sentence. Hey, that takes challenge. All right. I love this press and seal so much better than just plain old saran wrap. Because plain old saran wrap ain't doing the job. I'm just saying. All right. Set that in the fridge and we'll have it tonight for supper. I'm going to do like a little veggie tray type thing, I think. i got to kind of look in there and see what else I've got. I know I've got some grapes. Oh, crap it. I thought I had a can of... Uh, uh, bag of carrots. I think I used those. I think I steamed them or something. Alright, we're moving y'all. We are now going to do... Hey, i got to wash my hands. So, we're going to tackle that. Get y'all down in here. Uh-oh. Wrong way. There. Alright. I need to remember to check that other cantaloupe. Let's do that right now. Whoa. Oh, it's not Okay, he has no bad spots. And the way you can tell if they're ripe, well, yeah, he does have one little... I think I'll do him tomorrow. But see that? That's where the stem was. If it was ready, it would be darkened. Like dark brown and kind of sunk in and dried up. He does have a couple of soft spots. But nothing like that other one. So we're going to let him hang out a little bit. Probably either tomorrow or Saturday. I'll cut it up. And we'll use it for something, I know. So, now, I have to do some dishes by hand. So that's what that is. Oh, if y'all can see them, I don't think you can see them. Alright, need a sip of water. Mmm. 
good quality H2O. All right, tonight for our supper. And y'all, Fat Man and Carol Beth both are still talking about that chicken I did in the Instapot. The chicken with the rice. Girl. And then I found tonight, well, tonight, before I go any further, I'm going to do this roast. It's the last one from our cow we had done. It's a beef rump roast. So, I've never quite seen a cut like that that I know of. But we're going to do that. I'm going to do it in the Instapot. Yeah. I've got some potatoes I'm going to use. And I even did, hey, Google does it. They, these are some that I've had, and now they've got little eyes on them. So, and he's, even that one, um, he's not wrinkled too bad. So, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them. They aren't like really, really small, but they ain't really, really big. They're medium. Um, I'm gonna take those. I did look it up. You can actually eat potatoes with the eyes. You just have to make sure to peel the potato and make sure none of the eyes are left on there. i got to move this garbage can. We're going to sit y'all. Well, let's sit you this way for a second. All right. Ugh. It really needs emptying when I move the hot pies for lunch. I took out some chicken drumsticks that were no good. Oh, I got a phone call. I'll be back. Okay. Wait a minute. Howdy ho, Aunt Winslow's. I am in the process now of peeling. I've got two more potatoes left. I've done four. I'm going to go ahead and just do all of them. Um... I'm in the process of peeling them. And remember I told you they had eyes on them. One had like a bunch of eyes on them. They're still okay. They're not wrinkly. They're not smushy. As long as they are not wrinkled and smushy or like sunk in or have a foul odor. If it's just the eyes on them that's the only problem, then they are fine to eat. You do have to peel them, though. You need to peel them. I'm in the process of... Ooh, that one's got some white spots. I might not be able to eat it. Um, while I was peeling, I peeled my finger. Like a good little chunk off the side. And I had sturdy strips, but I can't find them. So there you go. But I did want to show you a neat little trick that I have learned over the course of years. My garbage can is slammed full. I really can't put anything else in it. I hung a garbage bag from the drawer. I just took it and, you know, hooked it to each corner. I've not poked a hole in it or anything. It's just on there. And see how it's kind of sunk down, but that's okay. Whenever I get ready to do my potato, I'm going to take it. I'm actually going to put it down in that bag. And my peelings in the potato. But see, that's another good thing. If it goes in the bag, you know it's still kind of clean because it's just hitting potato peelings. Now, see if you got a spot like that. You got to keep peeling or cutting until it's all gone. Yeah, I figured I could cut through that part. All right, I'm just going to keep peeling. Once I get them peeled, oh, I missed the garbage bag on that one, didn't I? Once you get them peeled, I try to keep my hand in in there, but it's kind of hard. Anyhow, you want to put, oh, that's where that soft spot was. It looks okay. Now, if it would have continued real bad, uh, we would have either cut that spot out. I found it doesn't ruin necessarily the whole potato if it's just one spot and contained to that one spot. You should be okay if you get it off. Now, what I do when they're done peeling, I've got a bowl over here in my sink with 
salt water in it, like coarse sea salt. And I'm putting it in that bowl. And that's going to keep them from turning brown until I can get back to them. See, here's some more eyes. We're just going to break those off. And I'm going to peel. And after this one, I'm going to... Oh, crap, I missed the bag again. Yeah, like I said, you got to kind of stoop low to make sure that you're getting it in that bag. My stupor is kind of stopped at the moment. <laughs> it's hard for me to stoop down. And today, I have been so dizzy. And the only thing I can think of that stupid MRI machine. And I did look it up to see if you could have a headache after our dizzy spell. Dizzy spell. I don't really have a headache. Just dizzy. Um, after an MRI. And yes, it can cause dizziness. Something about because the magnet, the magnet is so strong, it does a number on you. And so, yes, you can be dizzy after. And I went to the place where they had the strongest magnetic MRI. Because he really wanted to get good, good, good images. So, there you go. Got them all peeled. Here they are. Sitting in my salt water. Like I said, I just got salt water. Because I, I wanted to go ahead and get them peeled and that part done. Before I really and truly start on my, where can I put y'all? You know what, you're in the sink. <laughs> um, I need to clean off my drying rack. I just had a few hand hand dishes I had to do. Batman's church tumbler. Popcorn bucket. We have me well, I'm the only one that ate popcorn the other night. Might have been last night. Last night or yeah, it was last night because they told me he didn't expect for me to cook because I had such a big lunch. You know, that hamburger. I've gotten to wear here lately. I think I've mentioned this to y'all before. I'm, I'm just nauseous. Don't know why. Can't make sense of it. All my immunologists would, could tell me, well, it's helping you with your weight loss, so let's hope you keep staying stick, sick for at least another 100 pounds. <laughs> He said, maybe then I'll level off. I'm like, okay, um, no, no. I know I need to lose another hundred, but since the beginning of the year, I have looked back. I can get on my patient portal to UAB. I'm going to be doing my Insta podcast video while I'm talking. Um, I look back at January of this year. From January to now, I have lost 50 pounds. I kid you not. 50 pounds. Yep. Go give or take. I went from 282 to 234 is what I weighed this last time. And that was Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. At the UAB I weighed 236. Oh, shoot. I'm not quite ready to turn that on yet. Oh, well. It's staying off. So, I don't have it programmed. We are going to go ahead and start doing what the instructions say for our roast. I will leave the recipe linked down below. Sounds like it's going to be delicious. So, I need to go get my phone and read my instructions again. I'll be back. All right, and here's another little reminder, especially for like your onions, celery, 
peppers, anything like that that you have left over, like you chop. I did these onions Tuesday night for tacos. I only had a few left. Granted, I mean, you know, it not even half this little bowl. And that man was like, well, what are you saving those for? It's nothing to, you know, that's not enough to do anything with. But my onions, when I bought the bag, they were very, very small. So my recipe for my roast calls for one large onion. And I always will take whatever I have in the fridge first. Um, you can do this with like a tomato product. Uh, if you have some pizza sauce left over, put it in a bowl. Stick it in the fridge. You can add it to spaghetti. You can add it to sloppy joes. You can add it to whatever. But saving and using is another budget-friendly way of making the most of your grocery budget. And right now, everybody needs help doing that. Amen. Amen. So, I'm getting these. It's hard to do with my finger. I got my finger that... Hold on. I'm having to hold my finger up. Oh, man. I was going to say, I'm going to cut my finger again. These can be... They don't have to be minced, per se. I just have the ones minced from the tacos. Alright, now, I'm going to put the... I'm going to put the seasoning on my pot roast first and get it in the um, slow, in the Instapot and put it on saute. But first, we got to coat his butt, get it right roast butt, um, with the seasonings. One teaspoon garlic, um, one and a half cups of beef broth. A tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, two anchovies. Uh, no, no. If a recipe calls for anchovies, you can substitute soy sauce. You can substitute soy sauce. Um, teaspoons of mixed herbs and four sprigs of fresh thyme. Well, I don't have fresh thyme. So, it doesn't say what kind of mixed herbs. It just says mixed herbs. So, let me move my beautiful flowers. They are so pretty. Sandy, they're making me so happy. <laughs> they are. I was having a blah of a day. Oh, we've got gourmet burger. Flavor Bomb Burger. Pork Rub. You know you've got something if you've got butt rub. Now I do have my guns powder. I think we're going to do the Gourmet Burger. What is it? Dried onion, spices, diced garlic, sugar, chili pepper, Rice concentrate, tomato power, dried real bed pepper, natural smoke, and grilled flavors. Let's see what the flavor bomb had. That said it had uh, chili powder or chili pepper. All right, what's this one? Sea salt, sugar, corn, brown sugar, tomato powder, diced onion, garlic powder, spices, mustard, dried green bell pepper, yeast extract to dried, jalapeno pepper. Okay, um, which is worse, jalapeno or the red? This feels like it's been in there for a hot minute. April 2024, so. I think what I'm going to do, because I can't decide on either one of those, and if it's too spicy, me or Carol Beth can't eat it. I mean, 
We usually use those when we do hamburgers because I'll spice up those and then make mine and Carol Beth a little bit different. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get paprika. We are going to get gunpowder seasoning. We're going to get onion powder. Garlic powder. And remember it called for thyme. I'm going to get thyme leaves. And got some rosemary, but I don't think I need it. Uh oh. I got some soul seasoning. I think I'm going to put a bit of that in there. That just sounds good. So, I've got a little collection. Don't know what it's going to taste like. But it can't be too bad. So we're going to use soul seasoning. We're going to use garlic powder. We're going to use onion powder. Gunpowder seasoning. Paprika. And then our thyme leaves. Alright, so it says mix up in a small bowl. Well, it says season meat with salt and pepper. Select saute function of Instapot. Add one tablespoon of oil and wait till it's hot. I'm going to sear it for five minutes and then remove. Add remaining oil, scrape in the bottom. Saute onions for five minutes. Okay, we don't add in the mixed herbs until after the onions are done and garlic. So, we're just going to kind of let those hang out there. I guess while I do have them out, I should go ahead and measure them off and get them in a container. Let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, so far I've added my soul seasoning, my onion powder, and my garlic powder. And I'm just doing a teaspoon of each. Um, Probably on my paprika, I will only go, let's do a half a teaspoon of paprika. And I did not really realize the flavor, but whenever I made, oh, what was it, that pork butt maybe, I made something and I put paprika in it. And oh my stars and hennies, made a difference, made a difference. All right, now here's my gunpowder seasoning. And this smells just like a charcoal grill. I kid you not. Um, I like this way better than liquid smoke. You get this and rub it on your meat and let it sit for a bit. Marinate in it. And oh my goodness. Alright, we're going to just kind of stir this up. It smells delicious. I know what it was that I put that paprika in when I did that Instapot chicken and rice. Yes, ma'am. Made that stuff. I mean, that was good. That was good. If this is half as good a, as that, oh, my stars and garters. Now, to go with the roast, I am going to put my potatoes in some canned carrots that I canned. You add them last, let them cook for like five minutes, and then let it do its release thing. Um, so that's last. You put that in after your minutes with your roast. But this smells so good. All right. Now we're going to move on. We're going to season meat with salt and pepper. Select saute function. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of oil. We're going to heat our meat on sear. We're going to saute it for five minutes on each side. Okay, that's what we're going to do now. So, I said salt and pepper. I don't know why I can't just go ahead and use my, my mixture. The magic. That's what we're going to call it. I don't know why I can't go ahead and use my magic on it. All right, I'm going to angle y'all down so y'all can see what's happening. 
All right. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go ahead and open my roast. It's back seal. And like I said, this is our last roast from our cow that we had done. Um, Here I am. I'm going to add the oil. It's had a tablespoon. So I'm just kind of having a... Tell you what, we're going to do this. This little thing drives me crazy. Mine don't come out right. I've seen other people's and theirs just kind of flows out. Mine doesn't flow out. And I don't know why. Alright, that looks good. We're going to put it on saute. And we're going to go... Let's do five minutes. Well, we're actually going to do it a total of ten and then five or so but we're going to do it this way all right we're going to set it for oh how do you turn it on oh there you go you wait your seconds i forgot about that i forgot about that okay y'all talk amongst yourselves I had to trim some of this meat off. Hey, Bubba. Hey. How'd it go? Well, well what? Jeremy. Jimmy said, How much was it? It was free. Okay. Free is awesome. Is you take three to make up for your ambient. Ambient be in tomorrow. Okay. Good Lord. I am so sorry that you. And they still didn't do everything. I needed my iron, I needed my doxapin. I guess I'm going to just have to go and sit. But I can't drive to go and sit. How'd your day go after you dropped me off? Uh uh. Okay, I've got my rose through my Instapot. I've done it for five minutes on each side so it will start okay. Now we're going to take it out. Get on the pan. Oh, and it is heavy. So awkward, kind of. Alright, spread on both sides. See those little tidbits down in there? We want those tidbits. Alright, it says now to add more oil. Eh. So we're going to add some more oil to it. Like that. Now it says to take a wooden spoon or a silicone spoon. Remember, do not use metal in your Instapot. Alright, we're just going to kind of scrape the good stuff from the bottom. Alright, now we're going to put it on saute. And we're going to do our onions. 
we're going to do our onions first. And we had set it for like nine minutes so it wouldn't cut off. I know it's not going to take near that long to saute these onions. But, yeah. And we're just going to kind of stir them around. Now, one thing I am going to add that this recipe does not call for mushrooms. I bought a big thing of mushrooms because I was thinking either hamburger steak, which is still going to happen. I thought I had some cube steak in there, but I do not. So it's going to be hamburger steak. And I'm going to do the brown gravy with um, <laughs> mushrooms. You can't. You just can't. <laughs> So, I need to remember to get, I'm going to use half my mushrooms tonight, and the other half Saturday. If, I'm going to check and make sure they seem like they'll hold out until Saturday. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Went ahead and read through the recipe yet again, and I'm trying to prep any, and it did call for, it did call for mushrooms. I, I'm crazy. I thought it did, but I looked at so many I couldn't remember. Now, for beef broth, I used bouillon cubes. You know, a little powdered cube. One cube does like one, one and a half cups. But trying to get it to mix together and kind of break up, I used my emulsion pulser. I actually bought the froth milk for my coffee. But what I like to do in that. But this is just a good way of kind of mixing like the instant mixes. Like my brown gravy, if I want to do it in a little bit of water, you know, it'll do a little bit better. And I'm doing that to make sure there are no solid clumps left at the bottom. All I gotta do is rinse the little metal part and then put it back in this little stand. And seriously, that is so simple to do. Okay, now we are going to saute it. I'm gonna stir that around. And really and truly, they could saute a little bit more. They aren't clear, are they? But I guess if they got clear, it said do five minutes. So we're going we're gonna to go with what it said. Now, I'm going to get my garlic. I call for a teaspoon of garlic. So, minced garlic. So we're just going to dump that in there. I know I was a little bit over, but it's okay. We all love um, now this just said do for 30 seconds once you add your garlic. That's beeping, let me know that it's on. Now we're going to come after our garlic. Cancel saute function and deglaze the insert with two tablespoons of stock. It calls for one and a half cups altogether. But and it says adding the meat, mushrooms, carrots, beef stock, balsamic vinegar, anchovies, mixed herbs and time and you can also do your um, potatoes maybe that's what it didn't call for yeah it didn't call for potatoes but guess what kids we're doing potatoes I keep stirring and 
mixing that around. All right, since it is going to call for me to go ahead and do my potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and get them chopped. I'll be back. All right, I asked Batman if he would rather have potatoes cooked with the um, roast or mashed potatoes, and he said mashed potatoes, and that does. That sounds better. All right, that's about two tablespoons. Yeah, it was about a fourth of a cup. So, we added that. Okay, now it says add in the meat. That side up. Okay. Mushrooms. Alright, when I got my mushrooms, um, I got them at Aldi. Yeah, I got them at Aldi. And they were actually cheaper getting the sliced ones than getting, um, we're going to say that's about half. Because technically, I'm the only one that likes to eat them. Alright, so now our beef stock. I'm not going to add our carrots because they are already pre-cooked. Remember, I pressure canned them. So they're pre-cooked. All they've got to do is heat up. So when this gets done, I'll put those in and let it do for like three minutes just to heat up. Okay, balsamic vinegar. I do not have balsamic, but I do have red wine vinegar. So... We're going to use red wine vinegar. I would gotten it for another recipe, but I don't remember. I never did open it and use it. And now I don't remember what the recipe was. I don't know if I can get this little job open. I know Batman probably couldn't. His uh, fingers bother him so bad, and now mine are, might have to get care of it. She's a pro at this, unless she can't get it, and if she can't get it, then she gets upset. Hey, hon. Hey. I cannot get this. Well, wait a minute. Let me try a knife. Yeah, I can't even get it with a knife. Oh. oh, wait a minute. There we go. I think I started it. Can you open this for me? I kind of started it with me and I couldn't grab it. Oh, there you go. It kept just sliding off my hand. Batman came to the rescue. Maybe not. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, something's about to break that. Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Alright, it calls for one teaspoon. So, we're going to pour that in there. What the heck? Little bit more ain't gonna hurt. I'm gonna be like Justin Wilson. What was it he used to always say? A little bit more? Something about a little bit more. Okay, anchovies. Remember, I said you could substitute your anchovies with soy sauce.
right now are mixed herbs. I'm probably going to use like what well, said two teaspoons. I got them all mixed up. Oh, oh we already had the mushrooms. Okay, there's one teaspoon. We'll kind of make sure it gets a little bit of everywhere. Here's another teaspoon. And there's that much left, so you know what? We're going to go ahead and dump that in too. So I told you I was going to be like just Wilson. The Cajun cook always made everything so good. Alright, now it says thyme leaves. And remember, it was supposed to be four sprigs of fresh. We're just going to kind of sprinkle some in there. It's not wanting to come out of its home. Maybe another sprinkle all the way around. There we go. Okay, now cover with the lid. I'm still getting used to this. But Debbie, I love it. Okay, I'm supposed to see my little doomajigger. Oh, here we go. It's on this side. And then it's here. I may have to get me a a sticker or a white marker or something to make it where I can see it better. Okay, we're going to select manual pressure or high pressure. High pressure. Um, we're going to set it for 50 minutes. I think I'm going to go 60 because I read in another recipe the longer you cook it, the better it's going to be. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. It, it never did really say where to put the gravy or did it even call for gravy. Like I said, I looked at so many different recipes. Yeah, see this one didn't. I got it out because I thought it did and it did not. So, I am going to finish cutting up my taters. I'm going to put my minced garlic and my mushrooms away and I'll be back. Alright, while my Instapot is doing its thing with the roast, I've got the potatoes going for mashed potatoes. Remember, I did the eyes off of them, but they were okay. Now I'm doing some squash that I've had in the refrigerator for a hot minute, but it's fine. And then I used up the last two small onions that I had. Uh-oh, that's supposed to be cut. But it's like, there we go, I unstuck them. So I'm just going to kind of let these saute or brown or whatever you want to call it for just a bit. And then we're going to add some water to it. Now, I have not added any bacon grease or salt pork or anything like that because I don't have any. But... But I do have, like, the, the small edges whenever I did my boneless smoke, the, the ham, the Smithfield honey-coated ham that I got from Darlene's. Um, I kept this that I'm going to probably finally put it in the freezer. But this is going to be seasoning ham because the pieces are so small 
you couldn't really do too much with it other than seasoning. So I'm just going to kind of cut it in chunks. Yeah, you can see that brown sugar on the outside. It is so good. We had some sandwiches off of it. I made like a... I need my ham and potato recipe back. Don't I, Daddy? Poor man taters. Yeah. I can add a little bit of water. See how my searing kind of settled down and got quiet. Now, I can find a lid. I've got a universal lid. Somewhere. Uh oh. Oh, honey. Yeah. Wait a minute, I might can get it. Oh. My big universal lid got shoved at the very back of the bottom cabinet. Got it. Oh. And then use the drainer. Okay. And somehow or another, I did the washer to show Bo what it was doing. And it messed up like it did with me today. And then I turned it to show him that it would do it on any cycle. And the gosh darn thing worked on spin. So luckily though, it's working enough that we can spin and get that water out of there. So that's a plus. That's a plus. Alright, I'm going to just put that lid on. And we're going to let those simmer. I'm going to have it like on th between three and four. Yeah. All right, now I know my taters. I'll say they're done. Oh, yeah. Those are done. So we're going to turn them off. And see, there's the taters. So all I'm going to do is drain them. Put them back in that pot. Add butter and a little bit of sour cream I need to use up. So, I'm using things that I need to use up. It's Thursday. It's like toward the end of the week. We're finishing up some produce out of the refrigerator. Like I said, that cantaloupe had been sitting there. Um, my sour cream is down just a little bit. I'm going to add that to my potatoes. I didn't even think about that until... I said butter, and I was trying to think, what else do I add to it? So think about things that you need to use up, and kind of do that as substitution, or just throw it in there to make it, you know, I've got this, I need to use it, I'm just going to throw it in there. And you might come up with the best recipe you ever put in your pie hole. I'm just saying. Alright, so I'm going to get my ham put in the freezer. And drain these taters, and I'll be back. We're going to be making some hoe cakes. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I had it recording earlier or not. But anywho, I've done my mashed potatoes. They're back here. My squash is still doing its thing. My Instapot has 21 minutes left on it. And then I know I'm going to have to do, you know, the pressure release. So. I told Pat and it's probably going to be around 7. Maybe a little bit later. It's 6.30 now. So, we're used to eating by 6. Or I try to have it ready by 6. But some days just things come up. I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me with that roast in the Instapot. And now I know I should have started sooner than I did. Alright, you only need really and truly two ingredients for hoe cakes. 
I got stone ground cornmeal. Yes, I mean like true stone ground. You can tell a difference between true stone ground meal and then just cornmeal. That's stone ground meal. Now go look at meal if you got any in the kitchen. But cornmeal, I'm going to use, it's just me, Bo, and um, Carol Beth. So we're going to start out with like that much, but we all love hoe cakes and then buttermilk. Usually I have to do milk and lemon juice or milk and vinegar or something. But milk and buttermilk. I can do milk and buttermilk. Lord have mercy. Corn cornmeal and then buttermilk. And you're just going to kind of do it. I have no measurements. I just dumped in um, what I think the three of us will need. I might have to make up a little bit more. Or this might make up way too much. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get there. Alright, see how it's not... We're going to need milk. better milk. I intentionally bought buttermilk at the grocery store the other week. So, yeah, let's kind of keep getting it incorporated. And now we're going to need another splash. There. And I'm going to do my little skillet. I mean, it's... What about this little skillet's, what, a five inch? Yeah, five or six. Yeah, it's like a five or six inch. My big one over here, I don't know how big it is. And I had a real huge one. And I don't know, I don't know if Brian got that one. I know I, I gave him one, um, but I wouldn't think that I'd give him my biggest one. I mean, it was just him at the time when he moved out. Oh, he didn't want to move out, but later he told us that that was the best thing we ever did for him. Didn't he, hon? Yeah. Okay, you're going to just keep adding your buttermilk. Until you know it's the consistency that you're looking for. Okay, we might use this whole thing. You want it real into it, almost like pancake batter, maybe a little bit thicker. Okay, I think this might have done it. Let's see. We're going to keep incorporating, keep stirring. I don't want to make it too watery. I was feeling how much buttermilk I had left. I think I'm going to save it for some biscuits. We need a smidge of salt. Hold on if I'm moving y'all, I'm sorry. Alright, so we're going to need just a pinch or two of salt. I do not add sugar to mine. Some people actually add sugar to their cornbread. What the heck, people? No. Sugar in your grits, yes. Sugar to your cornmeal or hoe cakes or no. No, 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 no. Yeah. This is perfect. And you saw how I just kind of, you know, measurements just did it until you know that it's like that. 
where it's going to take a long time to kind of drip off. So I want to find my spoon, my spoon. What happened to my other scoop? I don't know. I don't know where it would be. Ah, I found a scoop. I had a medium one. I knew I had a bigger one. We got the big daddy. Alright, we're just waiting for this. I had to put this on my finger to keep stuff from getting in it. It's a stat lock used, supposed to be used on my leg for my catheter tubing, but this adhesive does not work well with me. That's why I've got enough cotton covering my skin. All right. What are we looking like? And remember, you can test your grease two ways. You can spit in it, and if it sizzles, it's good. Or, you could do um, the wooden spoon trick. If you stick the spoon in the bottom and the bubbles form around it, then you know it's good now. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to add some more water to my squash. Brian always calls it squash stew. Well, I keep telling him, no, it's stew squash. No, 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 that's squash stew. Does he still call it that, I wonder? Probably. He probably does. He probably does. But I think now, um, he grills it more than he stews it. I think Andrew kind of taught him that. You know what? If we like things in grease. Alright, I have this container I have my cornmeal in. I'm just going to stick it back in this airtight container and put it in the cabinet. Now, we are sizzling. And that's because I had some water already in the bottom of the pan. I rinsed it. This is one of my pans that I keep hanging from my fancy shelves over there. Alright, so we're just going to spread that out. Not squish it flat, but you just want to kind of spread it out. And that's about the size we're looking for. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get the plate ready. And the best thing for grease is brown paper. Um, I don't know if you guys a brown paper sack or not. If not, we'll just use I think we're just going to use Scott Tower. Because I don't know where I can get my hands on right now. You know, urgently. On brown paper sacks. Don't want to do brown paper sacks. You know, we'll hardly all be good. But I don't want to use them, you know. There's the big kind. <laughs> and so I'm just going to fry this and I'll be back okay I just flipped that hoe cake and see how it's kind of kind of like the first pancake the very first one might be funky I'm just saying so <laughs> right hun right. so I'm just going to make up this in this little pan and yeah yeah I'll show y'all supper once we plate it up. Okay, Huns. We're down for supper. I plated up mine. There's the roast. I'm going to move my hoe cake. I put the mushrooms and onions from the bottom of the Instapot on my taters and did the gravy. And then there's the stewed squash and hoe cake. How is it, Hun? Wonderful. I guess that was really good when I asked him earlier. So, 
I'm fixing to eat. So, be good, be sweet. Don't start nothing, there won't be nothing. Share, play nicely with others. If you need bail money, I got you. I got you. If I don't got you, fat man will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, until next time. Bye, Hans. <laughs>